Well, like where we were supposed to replace psi with f and yeah. minus psi with g, and I was trying to work it out with those plugged in. Yeah, don't don't do it with the size plugged in. It gets messy. Okay. okay. Do it just some random function f oh. and some random function g. Well, you don't ever have to define. Same way. Yeah. You did it with size. Well, if you just leave it like as psi. Yeah, we did it with size. I mean, oh, you just left this i as yeah. a yeah. Like so that's that's that. the psi was some function. That was yeah. fine. That works too. Oh, but if you, as soon as you define psi, it gets messy. And then, yeah, and uh, it blows up everywhere. Okay. On yes. On number thirteen. Uh, let's see. It's under the. <laughs> Psi one, which you know how to do normalization. It's the same normalization we've been doing since day one. And then the tricky part is he says check your answer against this generalized formula. And this generalized formula is this one: a n is equal to m omega over pi h bar all to the fourth power. And there's this negative i to the power of n over n factorial h bar omega to the power of n square root. And when, when you do this, you find that the equation you end up with, after you normalize it the good old fashioned way from, that we've been doing since day one, and this equation match up completely except for this silly i thing. I just, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit. And the answer is, after much, much consternation on my part, is this little line, he just says it earlier, on the, where he, just before he defines his isolated equation, he says, in parentheses, he says, with i's to keep the wave functions real. Which, in other words, he's saying, a-N doesn't actually have I in it. He just insert that to make it real. So when you get your normalization constant and it doesn't have an I in it, you did it right. It better not have an I in it. He uh. just insert the I to make it real. This is, this is, wait. This is a Griffithism. Wait. Which uh, is even in the English definition of real or the quantum definition? <laughs> because well, the quantum because definition I, of real. Well, I mean the math definition. This is the math. He's, he's, so, because so what, what's going to happen here is anytime you have an odd n, you're going to get an i out to it. But even n's will not. And your size, the odd, so you got these psi n's as well, right? Well, the odd psi n's are imaginary. So if you make a normalization constant that has an i in it on the odd ones, then the odds times, then the i's on the odds times the, oh, it makes what? it all real. Oh, I see. Okay, because uh, I was like, well, if you have an i, it's not real. Right, it's not okay. real now here, but then when you multiply this, it does, makes it real. Got it. That's the whole point. Um, so, so don't worry about it if your eye doesn't match his. That's okay. That's it's supposed to be that way. Um, and he only asks you to normalize psi 1, which is nice because psi 2 is a royal pain in the neck to normalize. Um, I tried and, I mean, I got an answer, but it's always a little He says, don't bother. <laughs> yeah, he says, find psi 2. That's easy to do. How do you find psi 2? Plug n into the equation. Just, well, yeah, he gives you the equation, or you can just apply the ladder operator. Just do a plus to psi 1. You can find psi 2. A plus psi 1. That top one looks a lot easier. Oh, oh, I didn't see 
and you know the ladder. You know the ladder operator is just a uh, <coughs> plus is equal to uh, I forgot uh, h bar over i. Oh, wait, say it again. Each bar over i, second derivative plus i in omega x. First derivative. I think it's first derivative. First derivative. Yeah. So if you just do this to that, you'll get psi two. So that's that's how you. Or you, I mean, you can use this little equation here. Actually, you can't use this little equation there because you have to know more information to do this. You don't get to use this, it's easier. Wait, why do you have to know? Uh, for so one, do we use the one that we've normalized or the one that we haven't? To get it doesn't matter. We check on um, Because it will be unnormalized after you do this operation anyway. Just the first. So I would use the unnormal. I would leave it as? Unnormalized? Unnormalized. So with? Like in just an A2 constant in there. So say it one more time. So it'll just it so we'll just still have like an A two? Yeah, let me let me show you what I did.
I just went ahead and did all five. You know, just did the first five. And so then I gave random definitions for those A's. Here's what, the, here's what the, the first three evens. So this is psi 0, psi 2, and psi 4. Notice they're all even functions. <coughs> and they're all real. So this blue one is psi 0. This orange one here is psi 2. And then the crazy one, psi 4. It just gets crazier from there. And then I did the. Uh, First uh, three odd ones as well, so one, three, and five, but just the imaginary parts. Why? Because the whole thing is imaginary. Um, so it's really the plot of the whole thing, it's just in the imaginary plane. So then uh, the blue one here is psi one, so it has an odd function. And then the orange one here is psi three, and the, the yellowish one is psi five. Notice that the even size are real and even, and the odd size are imaginary and odd the functions that themselves are. Um, this lights again. Says, but I just showed you how to sketch it. Um, it says check orthogonality. That just means this: two functions are orthogonal if if this is true, then orthogonal. gives you, uh, he tells you to check orthogonality of psi 0, <coughs> psi 1, and psi 2. Okay, that's going to be, how many combinations do we have there? Three. Just three, right? 0 times 1, 0 times 2, and, or 1 times 2. And I just showed you all the evens are even functions, and all the odds are odd functions. What's an even function times an odd function? Well, you're correct. What's the, what's the integral of an odd function over all space? Oh, so that just made half your two, two thirds? Makes two thirds of your three integrals a lot easier. It just does two, two thirds of your integrals. Does that make sense? The third one is a bit tricky, but it's not too bad. Uh, on that one, um, Alyssa, on the, the third integral you have to do, if you just type that out in mathematics, it just spits out zero. It's nice to see why it is zero. Yeah. So uh, you might want to expand the product first, just so you see that there's two pieces, and then do each piece separately so that you can see that yeah. they add up to zero. Just otherwise, it just says zero. Okay, that's, it takes away the instruction of the problem. Yeah, I just meant like the integrals at the end. I don't mind showing a couple steps. I just don't yeah. Like, yeah. It's useful to integrate. Sure. Yeah, I agree. And then especially on number 14, where it asks you to find x, the expectation value of x, the expectation value of p, the expectation value of x squared, and the expectation value of p squared for psi 0 and psi 1. That's eight integrals. But only four of them are hard. Yeah. Why are the only, why are the other four hard, not hard? Some of them are hard. zero. Because it's again, it's an integral of an odd function. So, well, you only really have four. But those, so with those, show why the four that are easy are easy. And if you want to do the other four in Mathematica, that's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, and I found that variable with the chi and the alpha. I found it cumbersome. Yeah. It's a chi? That's a chi. Oh. 
I thought it was a little screw. Kai. Oh. Kai. Huh. That's a snake. It does look remarkably similar to a snake, yes. Uh, yeah, I found those, those uh, shortcuts cumbersome, um, especially since I was using a computer to do it anyway. I think if I was doing it by hand, the shortcuts yeah. might have been nicer. That was the snake I was talking about. You're trying to figure out what letter, letter that was. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, uncertainty is easy to check. Yeah. And I, I think the rest of it kind of falls into place. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't for the life of me think of what it was called last night. And I was like, Jesus fish. And Darcy's like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Right? I was like, yeah, I got you. It's alpha. Alpha. Just like, right. You mean the Ixtis? Yeah. Except that it's in, in the days of the Roman persecution, what you do is you meet somebody on the side of the road and, and you draw in, your, in the sand with your walking stick because, you know, there weren't cars. You draw that. And if they were a Christian, they draw that, and then you know, oh, huh. you're not going to arrest me. They figured out the code, and then they're going to put you back. I didn't know that Christian's Bible. Jesus is strong. Do you know what to do with this line of code? <laughs> Say again? Do you know what to do with this line of code? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where are we going now? I lost track. Oh yeah, that, we're done with, is that enough hints on numbers of the homework set that was due today that I'm not making good today? Yeah, you turned it in or not happy, can we make sure? Yeah, go grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can give. I'm easy to give. I would imagine you want it before spring break. break. Yeah, yeah, how about before spring break? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there we go. So does that mean that Tuesday after? No, <laughs> yeah. How about, uh, I'm firmly on front. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, let, let me, I am, am hoping, yeah. with strong hope, to get caught up on Brady over, over spring break. <laughs> That's a big hope. <laughs> it might be. Seeing as I still have gotten homework too bad. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would make it go faster? <laughs> um, completion. Exactly. You just grade the doctor Owens mechanic. I mean, honestly, you could grade the rest of them the normal way, just, just to help yourself on that one. Since we already put in the effort, you know we're not going to slack, because it's already in It's true. Look, I did a lot of thinking this past week while I was on the better question. That was my conclusion. I'll, I'll refrain from answering that comment <laughs> at the moment. Well, but the, like, what is this? Oh, okay, so here's my big point in that comment was try to get to me actually before spring break so that I can get graded over spring break. Okay. So if you want to get it to me Friday, but before I leave on Friday, that's fine. The homework that I give to you later today or tomorrow, I know to get there. Will be due Friday, the usual definition of Friday, not that definition of Friday. Did that confuse everybody? Yes. yes. Wait, Very much. Don't that, that <laughs> the one that was due today, I'm postponing to Friday. Actual Friday. Friday. Actual Friday. Give it to me before I leave on Friday. Okay? Or before you leave, whichever happens first. Okay? The homework that I'm going to give you later on today will be due on Friday, which actually means Tuesday after Tuesday after spring break. Monday after spring break. We usually do it on Sundays and Mondays anyway. Okay. I hope so. <laughs>
psi is separable, and if the potential energy is a Dirac model, <coughs> and if you look at the energy that's greater than zero, then you get out this answer. And we already did that. Yep. Psi is this. And that's psi on the left side and psi on the right side. And, and the middle is continuous, we figured that out. And uh, what are these A, B, F, and G things? What do they represent? We would, oh. we would expect, yes, you're correct. In a normal situation, there would be normalization constants. But we can't normalize this, so they're not that. The incident reflection. Say again? What are the incident and the reflection? A represents the amplitude of the incident wave if you shoot it from the left side. So. If you've got a well, you shoot the wave in from the left side, then A represents the amplitude of the incident wave. Now, how do I know this is A and why not B or one of the other ones? Why not, why not G? I 
And so then what's reflected? F would be reflected. And then what would be uh, transmitted? B. B and what would A be? Zero. Uh. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Okay. Um, and then from there, we did this thing where we played the algebra for a good half an hour or so. And we ended up with something that looks like this. The reflection uh, coefficient ends up being 1 over 1 plus 2 h bar squared e over m alpha squared. And the transmission coefficient ends up being 1 over 1 plus m alpha squared over 2 h bar squared e. We got that part. I don't know. Did we get the line just before that? I don't we did not. We found B and F. Equals yeah, B and F. Oh, okay. Well, let me give you the line just before this then. Reflection coefficient R, which tells you the ratio that bounces back. What I mean is uh, B squared over A squared. The percent that bounces back compared to the spent amount that you sent, sent in. Right? Okay. Reflection divided by incident. And you do all the algebra, plug in all that stuff, you get this. I'll let you all do the algebra. It's just it's algebra that I'm going to spend 20 minutes doing. What's T? T is the transmission coefficient, which is the amount that goes through divided by the incident. to uh, two things, energy of your wave and the strength of the delta well. Mm -hmm. Same with this, but they're inversed. Why would they be inversed? If the wave doesn't bounce back, what does it do? It, it all goes forward. Through. And if it does go through, it doesn't bounce. You'll know, see what I'm saying. They're, they've got to be inverse of each other. So that um, R plus T have to equal 1. This is just a ratio, right? This oh. is, it's got to be all of them. Yes. 100% are going to either bounce back or go through. smaller, what's R going to become? Bigger. Bigger. If we made this infinite, <laughs> and we're already multiplying it times the delta to rock, but just, you know, if we made this infinite, what would R be? One. One. So everything bounces back if we make it really super strong. Well, yeah. What if we do the same thing here? Everybody zero. It's what happens to alpha? If we make alpha really big, then what happens to, to this piece here? It goes to zero. Or, I mean, sorry. This thing becomes sorry. infinity. Yes. So then we have one over infinity, and that transition becomes zero. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. What if we did the opposite? What if we made alpha weak? What happens to the reflection? It becomes zero. zero. It becomes zero. So if we make alpha weak, this blows up to infinity, which makes the reflection zero. Does this make sense to all? And what happens if we make alpha weak? 
is this piece? Everything goes through. Okay, so the stronger your will, the more stuff bounces back. The weaker your will, the more stuff goes through. Does this kind of make sense to everybody? Now, nobody's asked the obvious question yet. I mean, I've done this before. There, there's a crack in the sidewalk. I mean, it can be a deep crack. <laughs> oh, I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> Good example, just because it's a fun story. <laughs> when I was dating my wife, I, I convinced her to do not the wisest ideas. Anyway, one one I took her for a bike ride. I was going to have we're going to have a picnic nearby National Park. This was in the days when I was riding a whole lot. And it was 20 miles away, and so I thought it'd be fun to ride our bikes to the picnic place, <laughs> which for me is like a fun ride. This sounds like but something for, my dad did. But for her, a person who's not a bike rider, 20 miles is a really long way. That is a bad idea. Anyway, I had several bad ideas like this. Anyway, one of these bad ideas, I don't know why she made it with me, but <laughs> one of these bad ideas, I, I borrowed a friend's tandem mountain bike. <clears throat> Imagine that for a tandem, you know, bicycle built for two, mountain bike, okay? And I, we're riding through the National Park, which I knew very well because I spent a lot of time out there. And I knew where the fire tower was. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying, when the fire tower? Yeah. Like, watch it's, the it's the place where you, park, there's a fire in the forest. Where? <laughs> Climb the fire tower and see. And it's just really extremely tall tower, and you can see the whole forest from up there. But they don't want people playing on the fire tower. So they've removed the first flight of stairs. So the first set of stairs starts a good 15, 20 feet off the ground. Because okay. they don't want people climbing on it. So I took Rachel out there on her tandem mountain bike that I borrowed. We, drove, we rode out to the fire tower, and I proceeded to climb the scaffolding on the outside and <laughs> leap from the edge of the scaffolding to the platform where the second tier of stairs starts. And it's, it's, only, it's only a you know, five foot leap. And, and you know, if the five foot leap was on the ground, you'd think five feet, yep. easy, no worries. But when the, you miss the leap, <laughs> and you've got a 15-foot fall, it's a terrifying leap. You know, when the consequences for failure are high, the nervousness in making the leap become high. So, I, I, somehow I convinced her to do it. She made it, no problem. We, it was an easy leap. And anyway, why am I telling you this? <laughs> I'm telling you this because I'm imagining it's was a rock well. Is it good view? <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> well, except for the bee's nest on the way and the oh. one broken step on the like, like on the eighth flight of steps up there. Oh no. Other than that, it was a beautiful view. You could see the whole forest. <laughs> <laughs> The well did not stop the particle, right? Because we we're standing on the edge, there's a deep well, and we just leapt across. It didn't stop us. Small child. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my point. Why isn't anybody looking at this saying, how do they bounce back from a well? Because no one understands a model. It's like a wall. Did she write that down? Are the energy level is higher than zero. Yeah, the energy, I mean, you've got it. I mean, that's a hole, you've got to play and I don't understand. How are you going to bounce back? Why is there even a reflection coefficient at all? I'm just going to leave that hanging for a minute. Is there a graph somewhere? Now, what if, what if instead of Yes. 
alpha was positive. What does that change in this whole scenario? That means the well is towering now, I guess. Oh, so instead of having a negative alpha, which gives us a well, what if we had a positive alpha that gives us a mountain? So now our well is not a well anymore, now it's a barrier. How tall is this barrier? Infinitely tall. tall. What's going to go over the top of this barrier? Hopefully, Hopefully nothing. Nothing should go over the top. Because this, this is a representation of energy. <clears throat> How much energy does it take to go over the well? Uh, I mean, the barrier. An infinite, infinite amount of energy. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, what does that change in the way we found this? Stuff about weight. Nothing. How do we find this? Do you remember when we found psi left and psi right? We started over here and said, well, V is zero over here. And that's how we got this equation. And then we went over here and we said, well, V is zero over here. And that's how we got this equation. Okay, so how are we going to do this one? Let's start over here. V is zero over there. V is zero over here. So then what equation are we going to get? That one. That equation. Oh, but then we're going to say V is zero over here. What are we going to get? That equation. Same equations, right? So we'll have the same coefficients. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same boundary conditions, the same everything. And we're going to end up with the same <laughs> reflection and transmission coefficients as well. Can we expect reflection with this? So we get reflection with a well, and you get transmission 